Hi guys, welcome back to Medico Pharma lecture once again. Today we are going to continue the third lecture on route of drug administration where we will continue with systemic route of drug administration. Kindly see previous lecture on same topics for your better understanding. Okay, so we will start with rectal route. I am drawing a symmetric diagram of lower digestive tract to understand the rectal root okay so this is the anus this is the rectum this is sigmoid colon it is a part of colon and this is descending colon so these all things you already know now suppose this is a suppository or retention in nema tension enema okay so this is injected or inserted inside the rectum once it will go there it will disintegrate and dissolve and from the rectum the drug will be absorbed to the blood circulation and then they will reach to heart from where they will be distributed throughout the body and they will show the action okay now we will define this route as when drugs once given in rectum as a suppositories or retention enema and from there and from there drug is absorbed to blood circulation this route is called as this route is called as rectal route of drug administration okay now we'll see the advantage and disadvantage of rectal route okay so coming to the advantages it is generally used in children okay so generally given to the children second one the little or no first pass metabolism will be there we are going to discuss in later part of this lecture okay it can be used in unconscious or vomiting patient vomiting patients now coming to disadvantage the big disadvantage is it is embracing so people generally do not prefer to take this drug okay it is inconvenient okay next thing sometimes it can it can produce irritation or inflammation of the rectal mucosa so this is a problem and the absorption will be slow so slow absorption of drug will be there now we'll mention a note that the rectal root can be used for local or systemic effect it means it can be used for local purpose or systemic purpose okay now we'll discuss about examples so first example is like solidosis forms under this example is suppositories okay now coming to liquid doses form the example is enema okay so semi solid doses form the examples are ointment creams etc now we'll discuss about the blood supply in rectum and from here we will come to know why there is no first pass metabolism or very less first pass metabolism in rectal root so this is middle rectal vein this is inferior rectal vein and they will collect blood from middle and inferior part of rectum respectively inferior rectal vein drains into internal pudendal vein which in turn drains into internal iliac vein middle rectal vein 
also merge into internal iliac vein which in turn drain into common iliac vein now come to this superior rectal vein which receives blood from upper part of rectum now it will drains into inferior mesenteric vein which in turn drains into a splenic vein okay now this splenic vein will combine with superior mesenteric vein and they will make a common vein called portal vein okay now this portal vein will go to liver and from liver it will emerges out as hepatic portal vein this hepatic portal vein will merge into inferior vena cava the blood from common iliac vein also drains into inferior vena cava and this inferior vena cava will bring blood to the heart and from here it will be distributed throughout the body suppose a drug when injected through rectal root most of the drug will be absorbed in blood circulation through middle rectal vein and inferior rectal vein however no or very few drug will be absorbed through superior rectal vein and reaches to liver where some of the drug will get metabolized and are called as first pass metabolism and rest of drug will go to the inferior vena cava and heart as said earlier most of the drug will most of the drug will follow middle rectal vein and inferior rectal vein and hence they will escape liver and portal circulation and therefore there will be no first pass metabolism in case if few drugs get absorbed through superior rectal vein then there will be very less first pass metabolism now we will discuss about cutaneous root so highly lipid soluble drugs applied over a skin by rubbing if needed for slow constant and prolonged absorption then that root is called as cutaneous root okay now we will discuss about examples so examples are ointments creams transdermal drug delivery system okay we will mention a note that drug absorption can be enhanced by rubbing the skin okay so if you will rub the absorption pattern will be enhanced or increased okay now we will discuss about advantage and disadvantage the first advantage is that there will be controlled and prolonged drug absorption which provides larger duration of action hence the frequency of drug or dose administration will be will be decreased okay there will be no first pass metabolism and transdermal drug delivery system delivery system provides a smooth plasma drug concentration now we'll discuss about disadvantage so it's not good for emergency water soluble drugs are not given 
and difficulty in dose regulation and accuracy because drug absorption pattern is variable in various subjects so it will vary now we will discuss about inhalation okay so a gaseous and volatile drugs when applied on mucous membrane of respiratory system respiratory system through through mouth or nose then then this root is called as inhalation okay now we'll mention a note that particles larger than 20 micron and the particles impacting in the mouth and threat are not administered via this route so the particles which are larger than 20 microns are not administered through this route now we will discuss about advantage and disadvantage so there will be rapid absorption due to large surface area and high blood flow in the lungs okay then it is suitable for emergency or unconscious patients okay then there will be no first pass metabolism as drug is not going through liver there will be quick onset of action okay so hence the response will be very fast now coming to disadvantage most addictive route as it hits the brain so quickly okay so there will be chance of addiction now it is difficult to regulate exact amount of drug dose okay so very difficult to regulate it not suitable for irritating drugs okay only few drugs are available for this route then it is costlier okay and the last one is specialized equipments are required to administer this drug okay now we will discuss about examples so the first one is corticosteroids examples are beclomethasone dye Propio net, then ergotamine tartrate, sodium chromoglycate, then sympathomimetic drug, sympathomimetic drugs. Okay, as for example, pentrol, salbutamol. Salmetrol and Turbutaline, etc. Okay, now there is a limitation for this route. What is that limitation? Usually, this method is used to administer drugs that act specifically on lungs such as aerosolized antiasthmatic drugs in metered dose containers they are also called as inhalers and to administer gases used for 
general anesthesia. With this, we came to the end of this lecture. The next lecture will be on parenterals and other miscellaneous route of drug administration. Thanks for watching us and kindly subscribe us and provide your feedback for further improvement of this channel. Thank you.